now the latest across the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for September the 12th. Well, tonight across the wide world of tropics, we only have two things depicting on this map. However, we still have several, and in fact, I'd say many, AOIs, especially in the North Atlantic Ocean. It's day 255 of 2021. We've got Shanthu and Kansan active. Those two storms have brought our tally up to 65 uh, for the year so far. And unfortunately, yes, that is likely to rise over the next several days. Moving on to the Atlantic, we've got a lot to unpack here on day 104 of hurricane season. 94L, 90% chance of forming as that heads generally northwards. Heavy rainfall likely regardless of development for that one. Uh, an area of interest near the Bahamas, 30% on that one. That's towards the latter part of the five-day period. A potential subtropical system could form from a non-tropical low there east of the Azores, 20% on that one. 93L is losing its chance to form 50% on that one as it's over the Cabo Verde Islands. And another tropical wave has a 40% chance of forming towards the latter part of the five-day period once it comes off the coastline of Africa. In the Eastern Pacific on day 120 of hurricane season, Invest 97E still has a 60% chance of forming off the coast of Mexico. Regardless of development, heavy rain is likely in Mexico. In the Western Pacific, Shanthu is still a Category 4 typhoon just off the coast of Taiwan and near some, some of those southern Japanese islands, bringing significant impacts there. And Kansan is near land in Vietnam. It's looking pretty bad on satellite as we'll look at in a second. In the North Indian Ocean, 95B is still active. We've dropped our chances a bit since last night, 50% now on uh, for formation as that one generally tracks towards the Indian coastline. And as expected, the Southern Hemisphere is quiet. Uh, no areas of interest and no active tropical cyclones here, which I'm sure none of us are surprised by and none of us are complaining about. As we look towards the satellite imagery, you can see the thunderstorm activity associated with just everything in the Gulf of Mexico, the frontal system there, 94L and 97E. You can see way out towards the Cabo Verde Islands, we have um, 94L, or sorry, 93L, I'm getting these invest numbers mixed up already, bringing some thunderstorm activity to the Cabo Verde Islands. If you look way north by the Azores, you can see that extra tropical low expected to dive further south and could become a subtropical cyclone. And if you look northeast of Newfoundland, you can see what was Larry now bringing some snow to Greenland, believe it or not. In the Eastern Pacific, you can see the thunderstorm activity continues down to around the equatorial region, actually, but looking mainly towards Mexico for 97E. Significant uh, rainfall potential there as that tries to form. And Olaf, you can see the remnants there. The convection really just melted away after it came off the Baja California Peninsula. In the Western Pacific, you can see powerful Shanthu still going strong east of Taiwan there. Thankfully, we're not seeing a landfall in Taiwan, but unfortunately, we are still seeing significant impacts from that typhoon. And you can't really see it on, inf uh, on infrared, but if you look at the final few frames on visible, you can see an exposed lower level center of Kansan right next to the coastline, so we're real close to landfall on that one. In the North Indian Ocean, you can see the thunderstorm activity associated with 95B. Significant rainfall amounts could fall from that one as that nears the coastline and moves further inland. And in the Southern Hemisphere, it's generally quiet. General thunderstorm activity towards the equatorial regions. Nothing really screaming tropical cyclone formation here. And the sea surface temperatures around the world, you can see in the Eastern Pacific for 97E, it's looking quite favorable there um, for all of our areas of interest for their selected development, tropical or subtropical, looking suitable for each of those. In the North Indian Ocean, sea surface temperatures are uh, more than enough uh, suitable for 95B. And in the Western Pacific, we're still looking piping hot ahead of Shanthu, which tells, us, which tells me uh, that we're likely to see this remain a powerful system potentially for several more days, unfortunately. You see some temperature anomalies you can really see in the Atlantic where Larry tracked. Um, it's got that nice blue band of below average sea surface temperature. So you can see a little bit of Ida there as well. Um, starting to really rebound there in the Gulf of Mexico. In the Eastern Pacific, you can see a little bit of a starting point of Olaf's uh, cooling. 
nothing really where 97E is, it's above average where 97E is. Where our two Westpac systems are, it's generally above average. We might be starting to see a bit of a cool down where um, Shanthu tracked. And in the North Indian Ocean, you can see the Bay of Bengal, central western parts of it are starting to show signs of below average, but where 95B is and where it's going above average sea surface temperatures here. Moving on to the on this day, we're going back to 2003. We had this a couple of nights ago for uh, Mamie. Um, I'm sorry if I'm saying that incorrectly, but we had, but we're going back for Isabel, which on this day became a category five hurricane, a beautiful annular hurricane on this day, something that many will remember in the meteorology community and even those outside of the meteorology community. Isabel would, of course, eventually go towards North Carolina, make landfall there as a Category 2 hurricane. Very significant system there. And Mamie was also a very significant typhoon. It was, uh, I believe, tracking and bringing some impacts to South Korea and Japan on this day. So a little bit less active than we are now across the world uh, today, but very, very significant uh, storms on this day. As we look towards the uh, naming lists the, in the Atlantic, we've had Mindy. It's possible we see multiple names come through this, but the next two are Nicholas and Odette. In the Eastern Pacific, it's possible we see one more um, this month with 97E. We're looking out for Pamela, followed by Rick. And the Central Pacific, I know it's hard to believe, and we've said it a lot, but Hone is still the next name, followed by Iona. In the Western Pacific, after our little burst of activity here, the next names are Dianmu and Medul. In the North Indian Ocean, it's possible that we still see our next uh, name, which is Gulab, followed by, followed by Shaheen, although it's looking less likely now that we'll see a name storm there. In the Southern Hemisphere, looking towards Australia, our next two names are Patty and Ruby. We're getting close to our seasons starting up, about a month and a half away now. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, we're looking out for Anna, followed by Betsirai. In the South Pacific, we're looking out for Cody, followed by Dovi. Thank you so much for watching this Tropic Weather Bulletin, and we'll probably have a live TBB tomorrow night. <laughs>